Hey, I'm Anthony Renna, and this is Strength Coach TV, where we're taking you into some of the most successful facilities to give you a peek into how they were designed, what were some of the thought, what was some of the thought process into that design, and from that, we're going to see uh, some program design. So, as you can see, we're here at Mike Boyle Strength and Conditioning up in Woburn, Mass. I'm up here this weekend for the uh, Mike's Winter Seminar and I uh, wanted to come in and do some filming, trying to get a couple facilities. This is episode five. Last time we were at Frank Nash's place, uh, another Massachusetts place. So um, what we're gonna do today is gonna talk to Coach Boy. He's gonna give us a tour. This is kind of cool because we're gonna do a tour of really um, of the facility, how they structure their workout. So uh, we're gonna go inside now and uh, talk to Coach Boy. All right, so we are inside this big facility, 8,000 square feet of working facility, right, Coach? Yes. And 10,000 altogether. Um, so, Coach Boyle, uh, basically what we're going to do for this is go through how he runs a session. So, perfect. So, what you can do, and you'll actually, if, if you could see two basic, I guess, my left, foam rolling, when they come in, the way we've got it set up, we've got, I think it's 3,600 square feet of AstroTurf, although I'm not 100% sure if that's a, exactly what we have. But when we come in, we're in that first section of the AstroTurf. We're doing our rolling, we're doing our stretching, we're doing our mobility work, we're trying to use our, you know, kind of our padded wall here. So if we're doing ankle mobility or if we're doing leg swings or if we're doing wall slides, we've got all that stuff set up on this side. And then basically what we do is we work our way around in a, in a U shape. So if, as we yeah. kind of can keep walking, when we get down to here, and again, if you're, if you're kind of panning out, you'll see Caitlin behind me here warming up. First section we're gonna use for foam rolling and stretching. Second section we're gonna use for our dynamic warm up. Third section we're gonna use basically for our plyos, speed work, and we're gonna combine that. When we get down, you'll see with the medicine ball wall, where in that situation we'll be pairing, supersetting, whatever you want to call it, going back and forth, doing a set of plyos, doing a set of throws, set of plyos, set of throws. So we're kind of combining our upper body and our lower body explosive stuff. But we've got, um, you know, that way we can keep our, our turf kind of in constant use with, I hate to say warm up because I think warm up probably is an oversimplification, but with what we're doing prior to our strength work. Okay. That's probably the better way to look at it. Depending on the day, linear day or lateral day, linear day, if Adrian was to turn around, if, if we're running, we're doing sled work, we're doing treadmill sprints. Lateral day, we've got slide boards that are all down there against the wall. We're gonna bring the slide boards out down in that last section. Yeah. So our conditioning work, our energy system development, if you wanna get all athletes' performance yeah, yeah. on us here, yeah, um, would also be done again in this same area. So we've effectively got a, a movement conditioning, speed plyo area, and a strength training area. That's kind of the, the way it breaks down in the simplest sense. Problems like running into each other, just kind of having that the run, you know, this this section in the foam um, roll. And basically, in, in the summer when we're real busy, we'll actually cone it off so that oh, we okay. have. So if we're doing sled work over here, or we're doing shuttles. We might actually take a third of the turf, divide it right down there with cones, and then we would actually take the next three sections of turf and divide those into three sections because okay. when we get real busy, we have to be very very particular about sort of whose space is whose. Okay, this is your territory. You can't venture over here and that allows us because we really we're set up for traffic flow we're very much set up like a factory like an assembly line where you've got to come in here boom 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 work your way through and basically work your way back to the door so when we're done 20 minutes um 15 to 20 depending i think in the summer it's 15 and i think this time of year it's actually half hour so we'll have a three or three thirty or four summer we'll go every 15 minutes okay so if we keep moving, you, know, you get back down here, and obviously you've got all your plyo stuff kind of piled up, so you've got hurdles and boxes and mini hurdles and hurdles with extenders on them so that effectively we can make, I won't say any size obstacle, but we can make a, a pretty broad range of obstacles here in terms of whether we want a six inch hurdle or a 12 inch hurdle or an 18 inch hurdle or a 24 inch hurdle or a 30 inch hurdle. Same thing with the boxes, we can really go from four to six to 12 to 18 up to you know we we don't we usually, we don't usually go above 30 that's kind of the highest box yeah. that we're going to play with we don't get into kind of the super high internet box jumping crap <laughs> so you won't see us do but much don't more you than train that mama? <laughs> <laughs> and then here like i said if you if you continue down over here sort of underneath the jerseys we've got med ball wall area and again a, a whole bunch of airdynes obviously i'm a big airdyne fan 
and we're, we'll do a lot of our conditioning work more so with our personal training clients when we're trying to, to decrease impact with the athletes they might ride once a week okay. but we do tend to keep a bunch of those around because there will be times when we're going to use them for interval conditioning and I, I still think they're the best interval tool that you can buy so they really when you're looking at it, it's kind of funny like technology wise there's woodway tread, treadmills and air dynes and that's really it yeah, so there's yeah. very little from a, a computerized standpoint in terms of um, just like sheer uh, noise I mean you, know, you got guys over here you air dynes coaching is, is has that become a problem at all just with coaching and being able to kind of communicate to some of these uh, to your athletes Cause no, because so Todd noise. Durkin does not work here, so okay. <laughs> we're we're fine, Todd. If you're watching, no, we don't. So, okay. so we like we don't let anybody blow a whistle. There's no yelling and screaming, no chanting. Okay, no but, chanting. No all chanting. Right. Um, but in all seriousness, it it doesn't because generally you've got your group of nine, and they're usually 99% of the time within earshot of you. We do talk all the time. You know, it's almost like. Uh, when you've got little kids, you know, you're running like an elementary school, you know, you've got, you got to use your outside voice. <laughs> yeah. You know, we don't want the inside voices, you can't be in here whispering. And it was interesting, we talked this summer about, they were talking about the idea of like a six inch voice, a 12 inch voice, and then a coaching voice. And you've got to realize, okay, which one do I need? Most of the time in here when it's busy, you need that coaching voice going. Uh, no matter where somebody is, we, have, we talk about the idea of, of being heard without yelling. And that's a big coaching point. You've got to be able to yell at somebody without sounding like you're mad at them. Yeah. And, and that's so I think that's some of the stuff that we go over in our staff training of trying to make people aware of, okay, this is what we need to do. This is how we need to do it. This is how you kind of have to address all these people. So, but as a general rule of thumb, it's, it's not like, oh, you know, we can't coach it so loud. We actually usually have music going much louder than this, yeah. in addition to all the other yep. banging and slamming of medicine balls and coaches talking, but not a problem. So after the plyo, now we're going to... Yep, so plyo med ball together. Yep. So basically moving from here to here, med ball wall into here, pairing. So the bad thing here is they are, there is some kind of walking back and forth yep. here. We've got, unfortunately, a little bit of a, um, Thomas Plummer, if you're watching, that's a really good green, green trash can that we got. We are going to replace that because I know Thomas doesn't like those. If you painted it green or bright green or pink, yeah. maybe. Maybe in the red logo color. No, yeah. we're going to get something that's a little bit, a little more um, business-like. We're okay. working on that. Okay. But yeah, we do have kind of a little catch-all down here rack where, you know, because the bad part in a place like this is trying to find, okay, where do you put stuff? Yep. Because you really don't, you know, storage is great, but storage steals space. So we can't afford to, yeah. to lose space in that way. So yeah, It's funny, 10,000 square feet and you're still worried about Oh yeah, 10,000 square feet and, and, and the reality of it is if you come out here for a second, you'll be able to see the snow, but if you look out here, we actually turf this little area out here. You can't see, but if you look at this little field of snow right here, oh, wow. that's turf and med ball wall. So that even in the summer, we can basically, we'll be inside, outside. Sometimes we'll be doing plyos outside there. Okay. Because, you know, we realize that even at 10,000 square feet, we got a little bit squished down more so, more than we thought we wanted to be. Wow. From there, the only bad thing now about the way the weight room sets up, it would have been, probably if we'd thought about it more, the platforms would have been down here and the racks would have been up there so that the flow could continue sort of up this aisle. It doesn't really do that. It effectively goes, you know, if we're looking, we're starting up here and then working our way back down. So really what you've got is sort of down to here. Yeah. Then you're shifting your whole group up here to the platforms. Okay. And then you kind of work your way back down the weight room side. And really what ends up happening here when we're looking at this is we've got uh, we've got four platforms, four racks. Generally speaking, if we've got groups of nine, if we're set up right, we're only using the first three platforms. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever we're pairing with, whatever our stretch is, core yeah. exercise, is being done pretty much right in front here. When we're busy, the room, again, this weight room area kind of gets cut into thirds. This is a third, the racks are a third, and then kind of this back half becomes the other third. So we've sort of got you know, first pair or first try set, racks are second pair, second try set, and then everything else is taking place kind of back by the dumbbell racks or by the Kaisers or over here. So it does kind of loop itself back up again. Yeah. It's almost a little bit of a serpentine kind of flow that yeah. you have to get. And, and that's one of those, you know, we, we sort of had it all laid out and then we had to make a few little modifications. So it still doesn't flow. It's not perfect, but we're getting there.
Coach, tell us about these uh, the platforms that are in the ground. Yep. What's the advantage to them? Why, you know, why, why would I want to get these? Recessed platforms, I'll tell you, the, the big advantage here is that you delineate the space, which is really what you want your platform to do. You want your platform to say, don't come here. But you eliminate kind of the, the tripping hazard, the floor hazard, the raised situation. So now you've got a very clear delineated area, but you've got a nice smooth floor surface where you know you're not, nobody's tripping, nobody's falling over stuff. I think you'll see in the next 10 years, I don't know if you'll see people use raised platforms anymore. I think you'll see almost everybody going to some sort of integral in the floor yeah. kind there, of platform. Is there any sound uh, difference to no. no, No, it's not, not I mean, different. not sound, and okay. maybe, if you, if you had Olympic lifters, maybe they'd be more wear and tear in the bar. If you were really dropping a lot of bars, yeah. you, I think it's more the bar that would get beat up than yep. the floor or the floor pads. But this is literally, this is hardwood flooring laid right to the floor, glued to the floor. And then these kind of color-coded mats yeah. that are put in. And actually these, it's funny, I just realized the other day, these were supposed to be glued and we've never glued them. Okay. So we've got to go back and, and glue these down because I noticed some of the edges were coming up and I realized the edges are coming up and then I thought about it and I said, well, the reason the edges are coming up is because we never glued them. Yep. <laughs> got to go back and get that done. So, and then, you know, you kind of finish up at this end, power racks. We do have one half rack. I'm not a half rack fan, which is why it's over that one platform. The rest are full racks so that we can be working in the rack, doing chin-ups off the front of the rack, which I have always, always said in everything that I've written really important. I don't like that rack because if I'm cleaning out of that rack the way that it is, I can't do a pull-up in that rack. Okay. So to me, the pull-up bar on that rack is decoration unless I don't want to have a bar in there. Yeah. Whereas the pull-up rack, uh, the pull-up bar on this rack can be useful. So I could actually, technically I could have somebody benching and somebody doing chins, but I can clearly have somebody squatting, have the bench out of there and have somebody doing chins. I can put the bench across the front for rear foot elevated split squats and still be able to stand on the bench and just bend my knees and be able to do chins in front. So much, I tell people all the time, get a full rack. Don't, that rack is not half the money. Yeah. So to, to go and spend it, it's crazy. I, you know, I would always go full racks. All right. Coach, before I let you go, uh, biggest challenge with the move, really? I mean, was it just trying to figure out how everything was going to work? Was it, what was your biggest It was biggest trying challenge? to be up and running in two days, which is what we want to do. We did not want to be closed. We did not want to have an interruption yeah. in business. So we said, we're going to be closed. I think we were closed on a Monday or Tuesday and on a Wednesday. The kind of the Kaisers were laying on the floor because they hadn't been installed yet and we were up and running. That's the biggest, the biggest challenge is the logistics of just picking everything up in one location, putting it down in the other, getting it up, getting it running, and not, you know, again, when you're in business, you can't afford to be out of business. You can't say, oh, we're gonna be closed for a week and not make any money while we put everything perfectly where we want it to be. Yeah. That just wasn't, wasn't realistic for us. Also with the location, um, you know, we saw where this is, it's in a kind of industrial area, it's not exactly, um, you know, there's not a lot of visibility here, it's not like people are walking by. Um, did you find that that was something that, you look, we're a destination at this point in the game, we don't need to worry about the visibility as much? Yeah, visibility for us was, I mean, people are not, never, no one's ever gonna find our type of business because we're in a strip mall and they see a big sign that says yep. sports training mm -hmm. and they gotta walk in. So for us, the geographical area is really important. We're in the right place, but the geographical location in terms of visibility, even when you know Dan John was here today and he said, gee, you don't have much of a sign. I'm like, nah, we just got, you know, so yeah. if somebody pulls up, they know where it is, but it definitely won't jump out at you. All right, great stuff, coach. Thank you very much. No problem, thank Appreciate you. It. Appreciate it. Strength Coach TV. Whether you're opening a small personal training studio or a major strength and conditioning facility, Perform Better's fitness facility design team will work with you from layout to installation to create the fitness facility design that best meets your needs and budget. Their team of facility design experts is dedicated to bringing you the best advice and equipment to help you and your teams perform better. Go to performbetter.com to fill out a facility design form and one of their trained facility designers will contact you to get started on your fitness facility today. When I open 5 Iron Fitness, I use Perform Better and I can't recommend them highly enough. Go to performbetter.com. All right, well, that's going to do it for Episode 5 of Strength Coach TV. Thanks to Coach Boyle and the staff over at Mike Boyle Strength and Conditioning for giving us a tour. Um, reminder that you can uh, watch us at strengthcoachtv.com or you can subscribe. Go to youtube.com slash strengthcoachtv. So thanks again for watching, and we'll speak to you next episode.